I'm preaching on what I call demystifying the message of grace. Come with me to the book of Ephesians. Paul is writing to the people of Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's start from there. Let me build my case and then we will come to it. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. To the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about every other person. Next verse. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus who has past tense. Bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So the blessings have been given, but the blessings are in who? So when I am in Christ, the blessing is what? On my life. He's blessing me in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So now, he calls us to be holy. And the holiness is not based on fear. He puts the word there. God calls us in himself to be holy and without blame. And this time, it is not based on the law of fear. That if you don't do it, he will kill you. But you are doing it in love. What does it mean? You are supposed to live a holy life because you love God. According as he has chosen us himself before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. So God called us and adopted us. We are adopted. And the adoption was done by Jesus himself. He adopted us by Jesus to himself. God did that. So by the introduction of Jesus... God used Jesus as the adoption price to pay. Anybody that goes to adopt a child legally knows that there's an amount of money you pay. It's not free. Globally, adoption, they pay money. Jesus was the price for your adoption. He was what God paid so that you and I will be adopted unto himself. So God adopted us to him. And it's very important that you understand this too. God adopted you to who? So that you become part of his family. It's important that you understand that. He adopted you to be with him. That you be. Remember that God called Abraham to be with him. And he adopted Abraham's family. Abraham's family became the Israelites. The Jewish people, God gave them laws and instructions. God gave them statutes. And God gave them ordinances. So one is a constitutional mandate. He gave them constitutions. Then God gave them rituals. Someone say rituals. He calls the rituals ordinances. Then God gave them covenants, agreements. A covenant is an agreement between two people. So God gave them agreements. These are not by force. This one I am agreeing with you. If you bring 20,000 and I bring 20,000. Or I bring, you bring 20,000 I bring 50,000. At the end of the day when we run this organization and the organization becomes successful of all that we get take 90 percent i'll take 10 percent is what agreement we have signed you could not have access to the promises of god until you became saved so your salvation brings you into a covenant relationship with god look at it he says Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So I am accepted by God. He said, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. So the grace of God gives us forgiveness of sins. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. It means there was an inheritance, now we have obtained it. Our hands have touched it. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. 
In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Which is the endness of our inheritance. It means it is the sureness. It is the proof that I have been redeemed by God. That's just the meaning of that word. Uh, yeah, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. It means there's a proof. When you buy something, they give you receipt. He says the Holy Spirit is a receipt <laughs> that you have come in there. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. If all I need is grace, why do I need this spirit of wisdom and revelation? If all I need is to go to medical school and after seven years I graduate as a doctor. Why do I have to go to specialist school? Why do I have to do refresher courses? Because there is more. Somebody say because there is more. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and re- revelation, the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you will know, you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. So there are things you need to know. And he's telling the things, the, the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the workings of his mighty power. So, so there's more things that are aware. There is the workings of the mighty power of God. There's the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. It's not the same thing. Which he wrought in Christ. It means he did it in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And must put all things under his feet and give him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So we now know that Jesus is the head of the church. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and build our case. And you who have now been saved, he's speaking about you. Has he quickened who were? Dead in trespasses and sins. Two important words. The first word is trespass. What does it mean? Look at it. This nine meaning. To enter someone's land or property without permission. Important words. He says you, not only did you sin, but you have entered into people's land without permission. It means that when you come to God, you don't enter with that pen. so why is it why are they talking about permission is it not my right to walk everywhere no he says for every space you have come in there are rules that govern the place and to enter into my land you must go through the right gate and i must give you permission to enter you who trespass you have entered into spaces you were not supposed to enter you as he quickened who were dead in trespass and sin, the word sin means to miss the mark. Wherein in time past he walk according to the course of this world. So the world has a way they, they live their life. They just cross over and enter into territories that they've not been called into. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, are you saved? Are you seeing grace again? And has raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are ye saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast please if the bible is yours underline this whole thing about grace not of works lest any man so this is where pastors have problems because they don't understand the scriptures they read here and they pause he says by grace we have been saved it is not of works lest any man should do what 
Paul is speaking. He doesn't end there. Let's continue. 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in it. Wherefore, remember that ye been in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. He says there was a physical, you are Gentiles. All Gentiles were people who were not Jewish born people. They were not Jewish blooded. They called them Gentiles. He says you who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Next verse. That at that time you were without Christ. He said we were come, we were aliens. We were strangers from what? The, he said we were aliens. All the nations under the rule of the monarch Great Britain are called the people of the commonwealth. So recently we had commonwealth day. Amen. We used to have commonwealth games. It means everybody that the British government colonized or brought them under their tutelage or their rulership. These were people, they are ruled by a monarch. He came under them and then he colonized them. He told them how to dress. So until Kwame Nkrumah switched our driving from British to America, we used to drive like them. We dressed like them. That's why we're drinking tea in the afternoon. With all this heat, we wear suit and tie. Because the British people, that's how they dress. We speak the Queen's English. He are saying that you people, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were not part of us. Strangers from the covenants of promise. So one, they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And because they were aliens, they were strangers from their covenant. What is a covenant? An agreement between two people. He said, because you were not in the commonwealth, you were strangers from covenants of promise. It means agreements of promises have been enacted and you were strangers to it. You were not part of it. You could not benefit from it because you were not of the commonwealth. And the covenant was for the, the commonwealth. It says, having no hope and without God in the world. So you didn't have our God. You are without God. You did not have hope. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. It means that you have been brought close to God by the blood of who? For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There was a wall between east and west. That wall has been removed. So that now I can enter. No more apartheid. No more segregation. Now I can drive through everywhere. Why are they doing West Africa card? What you book or Ghana card? That they are saying that now we belong together. There's no separation. You don't need a visa to come into my country. I've removed that wall. Do you know that? If somebody has an American passport, so many, many nations, he doesn't need visa. Because America is ruling all those nations. And because they are ruling the nation, they don't need visa to come to you, but you need permission from him to come. But you can be a Ghanaian, a Togolese, a Latino. If you go to America and pledge that from this day, you will abide by the laws of America and that you would be a citizen of America and live and be governed by the rules and constitution of America. Immediately, they give you an American passport. The day they give you American passport, you are an Ameri. You have been made near because of what? The passport. Someone say the passport. So he says, we have been made near unto God by the blood of Christ Jesus. That's just the meaning. You understand it now? You have been made near by what? When they were far, put the scripture there. When they were far from the commonwealth, they could not benefit from the commonwealth. The privileges, the, the rights, and the promises that are in the covenant. Okay, so let's go to 14 and let me come. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle partition between us. 
having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. This is where we get it wrong all the time. There's one, he says that we began by saying we are strangers from the covenants of promise. Number one. Number two, he says Jesus has come to abolish in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance. He didn't say he has come to abolish even all the law of commandments. He's saying these are the commandments contained in the ordinances. The problem of the church is this statement and the first one. There's covenants of promise. There is laws of commandments contained in ordinance. This statement. Laws of commandments contain. You see, God is specific about the words he uses. They are laws contained in the ordinance. What is an ordinance? They were rituals that were given to the Jewish people when they were going to the promised land. When Israel were going to the promised land, God raised a man by name Moses. And God told Moses, now look at what is that. God told Moses to start building him a tabernacle. And in the tabernacle, God gave him instructions as to how the Jewish people must approach him. We call it rituals. In Ghana, we have certain rituals and traditions. When a child is born, based on your ethnic group, some people, they pour water on the roof of a building, a force on the child. Some people, they give their children incision. They were rituals and there were commandments to the rituals. So God gave his people rituals by which they approach him. If you somebody sin, there are rituals that you must do to cleanse the person. Somebody does it, so you bring a goat. The high priest puts his hand on the goat and say, I've taken your sin from you. The goat represents you. You and the goat have become two people in one. When you sin, you bring a goat. When you bring the goat, uh, you stand there and the goat is standing with you. You are two people. Amen? One sin. When, when I pick my hand and put it on your head and I remove it as a high priest, and put it on the goat. Your sin has moved from your body. It's entered into the goat. Then I release the goat into the wilderness based on which sin. Or I sacrifice the goat. Then there were other ones that you have to give me a, a cow. Others you have to give me a bull, a, a ram. You have to give me a turtle dove. There were so many, many laws. There were commandments contained in those rituals. When you do this, this will be your action. This will be the consequences. Let me pick one or two of them. Numbers chapter 6 verse 7. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister when they die because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. If a man dies very suddenly by him. He's talking about the man that has been separated and consecrated in service. Somebody dies just by the person. These are commandments containing rituals what you call ordinance is ritual look at it he says this. if a man dies very suddenly by him and has defiled the head of his consecration then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing on the seventh day shall he shave it and on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles and two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make an atonement for him for that he sinned by dead and shall Hallow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation. And shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost. Because his separation was defiled. Just when you are about to end, if somebody dies, whatever you did is gone. It's law of commandment contained in ordinance. Verse 13. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. He shall offer his be- his offerings unto the Lord. One he one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offering. A one was separating. Oh, Mark and Kabbalist are about carry. You can never pay. He says, a basket of unleavened bread, paneku, bread without yeast, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, 
wafers of unleavened bread anointed with oil and their meat offering and their drink offerings and the priest shall bring them before the Lord and shall offer his sin offering and his burnt offering and he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord with a basket of unleavened bread the priest shall offer also his meat offering and his drink offering and the Nazarite shall save the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his Separation and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram and one living cake out of the basket and one unliving wafer and shall put them upon the heads of the Nazarite. And after the hair of his separation is shaven, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. This is holy for the priest with the the wave breast and heave shoulder. And after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who has vowed and of his offering unto the lord for his separation beside that that his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed so he must do after the law of his separation verse 7 and it came to pass on the day that moses had fully set up the tabernacle and anointed it then god will now give him and the verse 4 and the lord spoke unto moses saying take it of them that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of congregation and thou shalt give them unto the levites to every man according to his service moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the levites so he go on and on he offered for his offerings one silver charger verse 19 so you you see it's plenty leviticus numbers plenty ordinances this will be sin offering this will be that offering this will be this this is what jesus came and said that we cannot pay these prices i have come to die for you to to bring to reconcile you and god this goat and sheep and turtle dove and all these that you keep bringing to god i have come to be the ultimate sacrifice on the cross of calvary that no more are you supposed to bring these turtle doves and things but reconcile you to me to himself so that now i represent those sacrifices so that at the mention of my name or when you receive me you become a child of god my blood sanctifies you and cleanses you it's no more that of animals of sheep and of gold jesus did not come to abolish the covenant jesus said i had not come to take from the scriptures but to fulfill it it means i came to fulfill does it mean covenants don't work remember i've told you there's covenants of promises then there's what commandments contained in ordinance think not jesus is speaking matthew chapter 5 verse 17 that i am come to destroy the law these people preaching grace is saying that jesus came to destroy the law or the prophets so what the prophets of old spoke about God's promises, God's heartbeat to his people. The things that people should do for which he would stand on and bless. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. Fulfill means what? To achieve or realize. So Jesus said, I came to help you achieve it. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain them, enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were near. He came to preach peace to us. What kind of peace? For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. It is the peace he came to preach. That through him, no more is there problem between we and God. But we now have equal access to God. Now, look at the scriptures very carefully. What does he say next? And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came to preach peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers. Are you seeing it? And foreigners. Remember, you have told us that we are aliens, it means foreigners. We were strangers to the covenant. So if we are no more strangers to the covenant of promise, what must we do? We must obey the covenant of promise. Not the commandments contained in the rituals or the ordinance. Do you understand it? He said we are no more strangers. First, we were strangers. God gave his people covenants, promises, and commandments contained in ordinance. All Jesus came to do is to abolish the commandments contained in the ordinances. That's all. Not to abolish. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, 
but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Fellow citizens. So now you are in the kingdom. Now, how did the kingdom work? Why are we practicing, for instance, tithing? Why? Because Abraham was a tither. And God said, I know you command your whole house after me. God did not command Abraham that the tithe should be a ritual. It was a covenant with him. Okay, you say, man of God, what you are saying is not true. Let's look at scripture. Psalm 105. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done. His wonders and judgments of his mouth. Oh, ye who? Question. Are you a seed of Abraham? Do you believe you're a seed of Abraham? Now, people say that Muslims or the Arabs, they don't pay tithe. They are not Christians. Yet they prospered more than Christians. Yeah. What did God say concerning Ishmael? He said, and as for your son Ishmael, I have heard you. I will bless him. And princes, 12 princes will come from me. Was Ishmaelite, the Arabs are descendants of Ishmael. Let me ask you a question. Did God say that he will bless them? He says, I will bless you because of you. I will bless Ishmael because of you. And 12 princes will come out of him. God, promise Abraham. My promise, your seed will be blessed. Psalm 105, verse number 5. And let's continue from there. Remember his marvelous works that he has done. His wonders, his judgment of his mouth. Oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. So we see that there's a comma to seed of Abraham, his servant. Then there is the children of Jacob, his chosen. Abraham had two sons. Ishmael, the firstborn. Isaac, the secondborn. Isaac's descendants were the Jewish people. Anybody who was out of that one was aliens to the covenant, the commonwealth. But the fact that I don't belong to that monarch doesn't mean I don't belong in the world. Two of us. But now we have been made near. We've been brought to the covenant by what? The blood. Go to the next verse. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. You know what? Judgment. What is a judgment? When you go to a law court, judgments are the opinions of the supreme judge. So he's talking about opinions. He said, he is the Lord our God. His opinions are in all the earth. In other words, the proofs of his opinion and how he plays out are in all the earth. Next verse. He has remembered what? His for. So the covenants are for where? Is it for a certain specific generation? The word which he commanded to a thousand generations which covenant he made with who and his oath unto so god gave it as a covenant unto abraham he swore it as an oath unto isaac and jacob out of which will become israel what was it and confirmed the same unto jacob for a law so the jewish people when they became a nation God gave it to them as a law, but in the beginning it was a covenant. So what in Malachi we see as a law, at the beginning it was God's covenant with Abraham. To Jacob it was what? When he came to Israel, he became what? Ever what? That's why the Jewish people, they pay their tithe. In initial stage, it was a covenant invoked by obedience. So now that we have come to Christ, if God says we should pay it tight, we are paying it because it's a, an agreement. If you don't do it, God will not force you. Go and ask Muslim clerics. They will tell you that the Muslims are encouraged to pay tight. So look at something. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, God says to the children of Israel to consider their ways. So let's start from Haggai chapter 1 and bring it down. I need to establish some things for you. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek the high priest, saying, "Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say the time is not come, the time that the lost house should be built is not come." Next verse. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, "Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your?" Sealed houses and this house lies waste. Now, therefore, that says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. 
you clothe yourself, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. That says a lot of us consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, bring wood, build a house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Says the Lord, oh, because of my house that is waste. And ye ran every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. You see, he says, consider. If things are not working, you have violated the covenants of promise. And that's what, let me just pick one covenant of promise. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. What does he say? He says, the land of the diligent will rule. Why the slothful will be put to forced labor. Give me New Living Translation or NIV or, or any of those translations. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. So if you're a Christian and you pray, 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 but you never work, you will be poor no matter the type you are paid and the number of hours you pray. Diligence will bear rule. Galatians 6 verse 9, what does it say? And let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So when I do the right things, God says I will reap if I don't give up. Now, being diligent means you must also plan. Proverbs 21 verse 5. He says the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. But everyone who is hasty comes to poverty. Look at this, NLT says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity but hasty shortcuts leads to poverty look at people who like doing connection they are always poor so when i pray and i don't plan i will fail covenants of promises god says if you plan and you are diligent you will get your results if you don't plan you will fail so what does it say ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might it means be diligent our brother here he's an architect trained professional architect 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 when he came from architectural school he was looking for money 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 he went to learn how to do plasterboard and pop architect he went to learn that in case there's no architectural drawing i know how to do plasterboard and things like that i'll make money hello hello whilst he's planning and planning and planning he's like nah let me there's an area in construction where there's no money let me go back to school and learn it so that by the time i show up whether there's architectural drawing or there's pop or there's interior deco or there's what what is he doing the plans of a deal he's planned his life that is playing out is giving him favors and monies but you are there ready ready mommy's girl mommy's girl ready or show them the law of focus says this james chapter 1 verse 12 he says blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god had promised to those who love him so why are you telling me that if i love you am i going to go through trial he said you must be steadfast you must be focused proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 a slack hand causes poverty but the hand of the diligent makes rich whenever you see me put my hand in my pocket and i'm dashing people money i have work oh it's not free dollars we don't pray for it to get into our pocket we work to get it the scripture cannot be broken these are covenants of promises if you do it you'll be successful proverbs chapter 14 verse 23 in all toil there is profit but mere talk tends only to poverty work hard be diligent be committed to the work that i've been given to you i'm going to do this no 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 plan this covenant of promise the jewish people you see the work god says i'll bless the work of your hands deuteronomy chapter 28 and it shall come to pass that if you hearken diligently to the west that i tell you this day that the lord thy god shall set you high above all nations of the earth and know these blessings shall come upon you he begins by saying you must obey the commandments not the rituals the commandments the covenants proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 to 8 says go to the ant you sluggard in case everything you have excuses and reasons look at what he says you lazy bones learn from their ways and become wise this is where we learn though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter but you lazy bones how long will you sleep 
When will you wake up? A little extra sleep. A little more slumber. A little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Into fear for before na mobile a ya nonsense prayer. Wa quadro tine yao wa quadro. Look at how we pray. Ah every far every day more. The work of man. You have no plan. You are not disciplined. You work a little when there's pressure, you give up. We just read the scripture that when you are steadfast, when you are focused, you reap. Church, know the story of the Bible. People work with God. They documented the people who work with God. We who have come to the same work with him and join the family, we take the Bible as a reference point. Showing us how to behave and conduct ourselves in the Christian faith. Some people must sow. You give them close to sow. They won't sow it well. They won't sow it well. They will tell you next week, three months, the dress has not come. Then they go to pray that. And say, yeah, 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 yeah. You are married, you are not cooking for your husband. Another girl goes to cook for him. You call the girl a slave queen. Yeah, she just slayed your stupidity. You were always smelling good because you bath before you go to his place. Now that he's married to you, you bath once a day. Once. No more looking attractive and sexy. Because, because of their children, their children. You, you remove their wig when you get home. Yen yes, yen yes, yen yes, yes, monkeys. We, we deserve to watch things that are ugly. Psalm 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him. He will make them know his covenant. Malachi chapter 2 verse 5. My covenant with him was one of life and peace. And I gave them to him as an object of reverence. So he reverenced me and stood in awe of my name. Malachi 2 verse 5. This is why God gave the covenant. The purpose of my covenant with the Levites was to bring life and peace. New living transition. That is what I gave them. This required reverence from them. And they greatly revered me and stood in awe of my name. So the purpose of the covenant for the Levites was to bring life and peace. Not judgment and death. Covenants bring life and peace to you. I read my scripture and it says that they go from strength to strength. Each one appears in Zion. As I show up, I'm going with strength. That's what the Bible says. Now in Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. God said, gather them. The people have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I need you to gather them to me. Bring my faithful people to me, those who have made a covenant. Let, then let the heavens proclaim his justice. For God himself will be the judge. Heaven, when we come together because we have a covenant of sacrifice, he says that God himself will judge our life. Church, if your life is not what it is, remember Hagar, it says, consider your ways. Here he's telling us we should gather by covenant. Heaven, God himself will judge us whether we should be blessed. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, he says, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. With virtue, with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control. Some of them, the problem we have is self-control issues. It has nothing to do with God. He has given us covenants. If you live by it, you enjoy the fruit thereof. Close your eyes and pray. He says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Second Peter 1 5, New Living Translation. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. A moral excellence with knowledge. God wants you to live a moral life, a holy life. Holiness without which you cannot see God. You cannot live your life anyhow. And when you are, it's time to reap the consequences of your bad behavior, you blame it on God. Wherever you are, close your eyes and pray. And say, Spirit of God, I make right decisions. I make right choices. I do the right things because it honors you. And with moral excellence, he says, do it with, with knowledge. And with knowledge, with self-control. Self-control, he said, with endurance, patience. Sometimes, sometimes all you need is patience. All you need is patience. Says, says patience patience says with patience with godliness godliness with godliness with brotherly affection he said with brotherly affection with love for everyone these are these things are, are covenants of promise God says I'm calling you if you are at peace with all men he says if a man's way pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him but that can only happen because you are forgiven the person I'd like you to lift up bro with your voice and pray God I have come to know your truth 
I've come to know that I walk by covenant. That is who I am because of the blood. The blood brings me into the covenants of promise. That if I am committed to doing my part, you are committed to doing your part. Father, today I will be committed. Today I will be committed. Today I will be committed. Lift up prayer, lift up prayer, lift up prayer. I'll be diligent. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.